Every moment, every day There may be one 
It has been said that the world needs more love. The truth is that all the love the world could ever need is already present. It's already present everywhere. Because God is love, and God is present everywhere. So created in God's image everywhere as individuals. We are divine love in human expression. I know that love is much more than a positive feeling. Divine love is the energy of oneness. It is the ability to remain centered. It is the ability to know oneness to know oneness in God and to know oneness with all people, including those who are dear to us and those we have never met. Divine love helps us see good everywhere, and it helps us see good in everyone. So today, I look beyond conflict and limitation and find the good that is always mine to discover. This message was inspired by this passage from the Gospel of John, the first Gospel, chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God, and knows God. Amen. I want to take just a few moments before I get started to provide some important information for our unity community here in San Antonio about what's happening in the ministry uh, during this time of shutdown. Our offices are open during the week, uh, Tuesday through Friday, but the schedule is kind of fluid, so if you need to come by the office for anything, it would be wise to call ahead of time and let someone know that you're coming by. We also have 
instituted a face covering rule for ourselves and our tenants in our office building. So you would want to be mindful of that. There are signs posted on each entryway. Just a matter of information, we all went through the storm this week and we had a little storm damage to our bathroom windows in our sanctuary, but we are working on getting those taken care of. Um, also have a tree down, we'll probably get to that when we can get to it. Some other important things is our most recent uh, yearly meeting there were some votes taken authorizing us to address all of our signage on our property and that is being taken care of right now. Some of it is in desperate need of being upgraded so we've got someone working on that. We've got a couple of proposals to get that accomplished. We're also in the process of upgrading and improving our website and we received information about that from Bertie this week in the newsletter. Also integrating into the website a new logo design that's been rolled out across the Unity Worldwide movement and that's been developed to remind us of our worldwide connections. Uh, currently there are Unity Centers scattered around the world and that branding helps us to remember our oneness so the logo is very much a part of that. That's a process that's in development and is going to continue. For the future of our churches and our schools and our other types of ministries, uh, we have to be proactive in trying to bring more people into our ministries in various ways. So all of this helps us to reach different segments of our populations that may be searching for a religion that's spiritually based. And the recommended tagline that we have for our new logo is unity is a positive path to spiritual living. And that's big deal for some folks. When I found Unity back in November of 1974, Unity literally saved my life. And so I know there are always people who are seeking to find answers that make sense for them and answers that are in alignment with timeless truths. And they're seeking to find a community that's in alignment with those values that they hold. So all of this is a part of us trying to move forward during this time of pandemic and be ready to open up when the right time comes for us to do that. So I want to thank you for your support and for all of your comments during this pandemic. As we continue to move forward, we're grateful for your support. I want to extend a special thanks to the Board of Trustees for their leadership and to the website and signage team, the music team who provides us with all the incredible music you hear every Sunday morning. And a special thank you to Bertie for her tireless efforts in so many different levels of this ministry and for our commitment to Unity and San Antonio. And I want to give a gigantic thank you to Pablo for his expertise in designing our website and for helping us to continue to create a website that's vibrant and alive. Also, thank you to Bruce, who's here every Sunday morning to open up our building, our incredible music team. Thanks for the three wise men, or now four wise men and one wiser woman, I'm told, who keep our plants and foliage taken care of, watered, and all of that stuff. And I'll say to all of us that through all that we are going through in this time of chaos and confusion and anger and hurt, all of the stuff that 
arises from what we've been going through for weeks now, that we will get through this like we get through everything else. And moving through it always takes a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of introspection, a lot of looking at ourselves and what we have to contribute to our world. So I want to use this as the launching pad for this morning's lesson, The Moat and the Beam, which is an idea that came to me this past Monday as I was laying in bed and thinking back over a perceived hurt that I had been privy to a few days prior to that time. And in this morning's lesson, The Moat and the Beam, there's this incredible statement. It's from the great writer Emmett Fox in his book, The Sermon on the Mount. Mr. Fox says, and I quote, the Bible is really a textbook of metaphysics, a manual for the growth of the soul. And it looks at all questions of life. From this point of view, it is impossible to emphasize this point too much. Close quote, quote. In that regard, he also said that the portion containing the five short verses that pertain to the references that I'm going to use this morning are based on face value the most staggering documentation ever presented to humankind because it contains more about the nature of humanity and the meaning of life and the importance of conduct and the act and art of living, the secret of happiness and success, the way out of trouble, the approach to God of spirituality, the emancipation of the soul, and all, and let me say that one word again, all the philosophers and the theologians and the savants put together have told us, close quote. So, needless to say, that I'm only going to scratch the surface this morning of this incredible message about the moat and the beam. At the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is an incredible message about the ethics of living a well-rounded life and about having and developing what the scriptures call a pure heart, my favorite portion of the sermon comes just very close to the end of his message when he invokes the following question. That's located in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 3. And the message asks this question, why do you behold the moat that is in your brother's eye and ignore the beam that is in thine own eye? Being a person who actually has physical visual deficiencies, the, the metaphysical and the metaphorical and the psychological and the spiritual implications found in that closing question have continuously impacted my life in a lot of different ways. And I suggest that it's probably applicable to most of our lives in one way or another. 
Because in the scripture, the eye is, among other things, the window of the soul. It's what we use to be able to see rightly and thus see successfully. The problem is we often see only what we want to see or what we've been programmed to see. This idea of the moat, which is the equivalent of a straw or a twig, or the beam, which is the equivalent to a large piece of timber, can and does alter our capacity to see clearly when we see it from all of those different perspectives that I mentioned earlier. One of the greatest illusions ever illustrated in my mind is a great example to prove this point. In November 1915, I believe it was, cartoonist William Eli Hill published a drawing in the magazine Puck. And the drawing is titled, My Wife and my mother-in-law. And when you look at this drawing, some people see a young lady with her head turned kind of sideways towards the background. And then other people see an elderly woman's side profile. Typically, it is the young people who see the young woman and the elderly people who see the elderly. So for years the assumption was that it was just about that. However, what they've learned later as society has progressed and more and more people are looking at this picture it isn't relegated to age. I've looked at it about 60 times, and I have to work to be able to see an elderly lady's profile. I'm not sure what that says about me, but there are others who have the same challenge. So maybe we see what we want to see, and that's what it's all about. And then if we see what we want to see, then maybe we always hear what we want to hear. Maybe the same principle applies to our feelings. Maybe we feel what we want to feel. Maybe we learn what we want to learn. So, in essence, supposedly this simple parable about the mode and the beam is calling into question the judgments that we make about everything in our lives. Most of us would like to think that we don't make judgments. Let me introduce this statement by my favorite doctor, Carl Jung. Dr. Jung says, and I quote, It is astounding that men and women, the instigators and the inventors and the vehicles of all the great developments throughout history, the originators of all judgments and decisions and the planners of the future must make themselves such a negligible quantity. In other words, why do we believe that we are insignificant in the world? Why do we believe that we can't function effectively? Why do we believe that hatred is stronger than love? That fear is 
strong heart and faith? It's a powerful question. It's a question that only we can answer for ourselves because it has been posed from the standpoint of the beginning of time over and over again. And maybe, just maybe the answer lies in the virtue of humility, not arrogance, because it is humility that helps us benefit the most from every endeavor that's been introduced into our lives. The modern beam. This week I invite you how to ask yourself the question, how do you fit in this parable? How do you view your life patterns? How do you view your neighbor? How do you view your world? If we don't ask ourselves these hard questions, if we don't take the, the splinter and the beam out of our own eyes, how are we ever going to be able to see clearly and to successfully navigate our way to a most, more peaceful and loving and kind and prosperous world? How are we going to be able to center ourselves in the midst of both inner turmoil and outer turmoil? The single most important relationship we will ever have begins when we are at peace with the person we see in the mirror. And when we know that, intentions become clearer and we become more loyal to the intentions that we set for ourselves. And when we live up to that reality, our world change, changes considerably. So the message is this morning, let's do our best to rise above all the chaos and confusion that's going on in our world and look for some solutions that serve us all. Let us also find to our judgment faculties and learn to be better brothers and sisters. Our emotions, our beliefs, our presumptions, etc., 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 are deeply ingrained in us and they're very hard to get rid of. But we can always make the effort. And the effort is always worth making. So I encourage you to pray this week for peace in our country, for love in our hearts, for the courage to do what is right as opposed to what is easy to do. And let's get together and make this country what it's capable of being. One of the greatest in the world. It's now that time in our service for our prosperity and blessing. I remind you that your giving is important during this time. And you can do that online at unityofsa.org. Just check the green donate button, or you can make a check and mail it to Unity of San Antonio, 8103 Broadway, Suite 210, San Antonio, Texas, 78209. Our offertory prayer is divine love in our community blesses and multiplies all that we have.
all that we give and all that we receive. We declare that to be the truth, and so it is. And now I invite you to join me in our brief closing prayer. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and so it is, and all is well. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. God bless. So you may notice that David is not, this doesn't look like David. So David is not with us this morning. He wanted me to tell you, hello, that he has been exposed to COVID. So he is not here today. Probably won't be for maybe, maybe next week too. But he is doing well. Bertie talked to him. So this is Bertie our communications and our wonderful, wonderful Bodhi that you hear about all the time. I want to thank you so much for stepping in and for learning these songs. Really appreciate it. And the harmony just sounds great with you and George. So, cool deal. Really awesome. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated.
So if we would join hands, everyone, as we as we perform the peace song. It's not. It's not my. 
All right. Or do you want to do, can I get an amen? No. Nope? Okay. I have my lyrics to down. Oh, you don't have it? Oh, okay. All right. So we'll do, I claim one. Oh, yes. How about that? I claim a blessing. Yes.